Greetings, distinguished guests. I would like present to your attention a report on the topic. Research on the effectiveness of using steel reinforcement for strengthening products made of natural stone. The use of stone products is a crucial element in architectural art, because this material not only provides a unique natural appearance, but also offers excellent physical and mechanical characteristics, ensuring durability. In recent years, there has been a noticeable trend towards an increased utilization of stone products, particularly in the context of sustainable construction and development. However, Ukraine, with its territory hosting a significant amount of natural stone suitable for the production of architectural and decorative items, granites, granodorites, gabbro, labradorites, basalt, sandstone, limestone, etc., holds substantial potential for the development of stone product manufacturing technologies and their utilization in various spheres. The widespread use of products made from natural stone in various aspects of human life is indicative of the leading role of this material in the construction industry and design. This is explained by its moderate cost and excellent operational characteristics. While conducting an analysis of the prospects for the use of natural stone products, it is necessary to consider not only their advantages, but also their drawbacks. This includes the low strength of certain types of stone or their susceptibility to specific types of loads such as bending. This drawback significantly limits the range of possible directions of exploitation of products made of natural stone. One way to enhance the strength characteristics of products made of natural stone is by utilizing reinforcement techniques. The technique of reinforcing products made of natural stone is not something new or revolutionary. For example, external reinforcement of products by covering their backside with special meshes fixed with adhesive mortar has been used for several decades. A similar situation applies to the method of internal reinforcement. European Union countries began paying attention to this method in the early 1990s, but its effective use on an industrial scale is only becoming possible now. One of the main catalysts for the spread of this method is the expansion of the range of materials that can be used as reinforcing inserts, including the emergence of entirely new and promising materials from both technological and economic perspectives. The proposed method of reinforcing natural stone products will consist of a number of the following technological processes. Manufacturing the product to the required dimensions and shape, performing marking along which cuts, will be made for placing reinforcing elements, making a cut to half the depth of the workpiece or to the depth necessary to place the reinforcing dowel in the cut, cleaning the cut from residual dust, slurry, etc., and degreasing it using special solutions, Preparation of fixing mixture, and filling the saw cut with it. Placement of the reinforcement in the saw cut filled with fixing mixture. Cleaning the surface of the product from excess fixing mixture. Storage of samples until the fixing material is completely crystallized. Processing the surface with a polishing wheel to provide flatness to the back side of the processed sample. As samples. Blanks measuring 600 times 100 times 30 millimeters made from Pakostif granite were used. The main physical and mechanical characteristics of Pakostif granite are provided on slide. Pakostif granite is quite common in the natural stone market in Ukraine. This granite is known for its excellent characteristics, including strength, durability, and decorative appeal. It is used to manufacture a wide range of products such as monuments, countertops, window sills, facing slabs, and more. The choice of reinforcing dowel is based on research study, specifically explores the strength of the adhesive interaction between different types of surfaces of the reinforcing dowel and the binding mixture. According to the obtained results, the best adhesion indicators are provided by steel reinforcement, class AE600, and composite reinforcement whose surface is coated with a layer of sand. Steel reinforcement of class AE600 with a diameter of 10 mm was used as the reinforcing dowel. The physical and mechanical characteristics of the reinforcement are presented in table, and the cross-section is shown in figure. The further preparation of the samples involved cutting longitudinal grooves along the center of the blank to embed reinforcing elements in them. The grooves were cut using an angle grinder, equipped with a solid carbide disc with a diameter of 125 mm and a continuous working edge. An example of a cross-sectional view of a completed groove and the placement of reinforcing elements in it is shown in the reinforcing dowel inside the groove in this study. White decorative ta component epoxy resin, fluid art, was used, the technical characteristics of which are provided in table. Before use, this resin was prepared according to the manufacturer's instructions. First, the hardener was added to the resin in a ratio of 1 to 8, after which the mixture was vigorously stirred for 5 minutes. The application of the mixture in the groove was done in several stages. Initially, the empty groove was filled with resin to a depth of one-third. 
Then the dowel was placed in it, and it was covered with resin to completely fill the groove. The spatula was used to distribute the resin in the groove and clean up excess. After completing the preparatory work, the blanks were kept for 40 minutes, working time of epoxy resin. After that, the blanks were kept for 28 days. Despite the fact that the resin dries and gains initial strength within one day, the manufacturer recommends a storage period of at least 28 days for it to acquire its maximum strength. An important aspect when working with the fluid art epoxy mixture is to maintain optimal microclimate conditions specifically the temperature and air humidity, to ensure the accuracy of the technological process and achieve the highest possible quality for the final product. During the preparation of the epoxy mixture, the air temperature was maintained within the range of plus 18 degrees Celsius to plus 25 degrees Celsius, and the relative humidity did not exceed 70%. The determination of the force parameters of reinforced specimens was carried out according to the recommendations of the National Standard of Ukraine determination of the strength limit under bending with concentrated load. The specimens were placed in the center on support rollers as shown in figure. The roller load was applied in the middle of the specimen. The load applied to the blank was increased uniformly at a rate of 0.25 MPa per second until the moment of sample failure. Firstly, unreinforced, control, specimens were studied to establish baseline values and a basis for comparing similar values obtained during the study of reinforced specimens. From the obtained graph, it can be seen that the unreinforced granite specimen exhibits typical stress strain behavior, with an initial linear elastic area, followed by a nonlinear plastic area, and eventual failure. The data obtained from the study of specimens, reinforced with steel reinforcement, was also presented in the form of a graph showing the relationship between the specimen's deformation and the applied load. The analysis of stress strain curves for blanks made of natural stone, reinforced with steel reinforcement, involved identifying typical areas that describe the behavior of the blank. In the initial stage of the stress-strain curves, a linear relationship is observed, the area of elastic behavior of the material. The load within this range increases linearly with the deformation. In this area, specimens retain their original shape after the applied load is removed. After the elastic area, the stress-strain curve deviates from linearity and demonstrates the yield point. The yield point marks the beginning of plastic deformation, indicating that the material has exceeded the elastic limit. At this point, Blanks undergo deformation that will persist even after the load is removed. This specific area of the curve corresponds to plastic deformation, where stone blanks experience significant deformation with a relatively small increase in load. Plastic deformation indicates the material's ability to undergo constant changes in shape without fracturing. The plastic deformation area reaches its peak at the point of maximum stress, which determines the ultimate strength of the specimens. Beyond the ultimate strength, the curve begins to decline, indicating a decrease in the load-bearing capacity of the blank due to its failure. Comparing the results obtained from the study of specimens, made from the granodorite of the Pakostiv deposit, and those reinforced with steel reinforcement, the following conclusions can be drawn. The considered type of reinforcing dowel ensures the presence of an initial elastic area. The use of steel reinforcement to strengthen stone products ensures a consistent increase in deformation with increasing loads. Enhancing the control over the response of plastic deformation, the ultimate strength and consequently the load-bearing capacity of specimens, reinforced with steel reinforcement are higher than those of unreinforced specimens.